Nick here again, um, PDGA number 53889. Uh, we're just going to go over some wind tips and how to throw in the wind, uh, headwind or tailwind. Headwind, we want to think of it as it's going to make your disc more understable. Um, so when you're throwing in a headwind, your disc will technically pick up speed and it will start to turn a little bit more, right? Headwinds, you really just want to go with something a little more overstable. Um, trust your angle, um, get it nice and flat and make sure that you know it's going to flip a little, right? So you're gonna to want to just choose something more overstable. Um, what I try to think about is if I'm throwing a normal shot with no wind, no headwind, um, whatever stability I'm throwing, if there's at least 10 mile an hour headwind, I'm going to choose at least one step more stable than what I would usually throw, if not more, depending on the wind. Um, that's kind of how I think about it. Um, that will get you kind of a good basis to understand what stability you should be throwing for your arm speed in the wind. Okay, another big, uh, big key thing to think about when you're throwing into a headwind is your nose angle, right? A headwind will initially want to go under your nose and lift it, right? And we want to keep, keep that down as much as possible. So headwind, you just want to nose down and have an idea of your angle, make sure the nose doesn't come up because it's you're not going to get any distance. It's just going to stall out. Tailwind, it will slow your disc down a little bit and it'll get more stable. So you'll see it come out and, and act more beefy, as you'd say. And so usually you'd want to take a more understable disc, trust it, and you can still throw at your normal speed, normal, normal angle. It might fight a little bit, turn a little bit, but it's definitely going to come out. Um, it's going to get on top of your disc and just push it down as, as hard as possible. So you really got to give it uh, some good height and make sure the wind isn't just going to slam it into the ground. Okay, so crosswinds. Crosswinds can, uh, can be really kind of weird. Um, if I'm throwing backhand and I have a right to left crosswind, you think about it, the wind is just going to hit the top of your disc, right? So if I throw it with a little bit of a nose angle down and a little ante, that wind is just going to bat the top of the disc down, right? It gets, gets pretty angle dependent. Um, but I kind of like that because you're going to fight the wind a little bit and you're not going to just carry when it gets underneath your disc. Um, and same goes for sidearm. You know, if I'm throwing a sidearm and there's a left to right wind, it's going to push me down a little bit, but it's still going to come out. Um, as you throw more in the wind, you can kind of decide if you like to use your crosswinds with your disc or against your disc. Um, I prefer usually to fight against the wind, uh, meaning so if there's a right to left, I might throw a sidearm so it just fights against the wind and gets low. Um, if I'm throwing a backhand with that right to left and I show the bottom of my disc, you are going to start sailing and just hyzer out really, really far. Um, so it's kind of personal preference, but the angle is really important to fight the crosswinds. Um, I like fighting the crosswinds than, than going with them and just gaining distance, but that is a personal preference. Um, but it's really key, like really dependent on your nose angle and if you're hyzer or anhyzer. So from an amateur perspective, uh, I've been playing a few years and trying to figure out as I play how to deal with the wind and personally figuring out that tip that he, that um, Nick just talked about of uh, fighting against the crosswind uh, really helped me. I had a crazy tournament where I couldn't figure anything out and the wind was just shooting my disc different ways. And when I found out to fight it, um, basically if it's a right to left as a right-handed thrower, if I forehand, then it's controlled the whole way. It might yeah. push it down. I might not get a ton of distance, but if I backhand, and that wind gets the bottom of the flight plate, then it doesn't matter the stability of the disc anymore once that happens. Because, yeah. and, and it'll just, you don't know if it's going to be 50 feet or 150 feet at a certain point. Yeah. And so um, that really helped my game figuring, figuring that little tip out. That's, that's pretty big. Another thing that's um, I know, but I can't seem to get in my brain when I'm playing is to keep it low yeah. when it's windy. No matter what, winds mostly except maybe tailwinds um, other than that just keeping it low in general seems like really important yep and yep. it's really easy to forget that because especially is. here in western colorado we want a hyzer big the big hyzers on, over everything and we kind of like doing that 
um, and it's good when you have space, but um, you're just getting your disc up into the wind and letting it have more of an effect yep. on yep. your disc. Keep it low and try and fight against the wind. That's gonna mitigate your mistakes. Yep. And another thing, I did watch a video from Paul Ulibarri and his, how he put it was never show the bottom of the flight plate to the wind. Just take it um, because that, and I think he said Is that, that your little baby, yeah, <laughs> isn't he cute? Because it's precious, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's just so cooperative, yeah, such a good kid. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of the main tip was never show the flight plate, and that really makes a lot of sense. If there's a right to left and you're doing a hyzer, then you just throw the flight plate and it's gone. Yep. And that you, goes for putting and throwing. Yep, you don't Same have control over it anymore. Yeah. The wind's just gonna so, take it. Um, one other thing that I'll add is kind of a bonus tip that I figured out from playing a little bit is, say you've got a headwind, it doesn't mean you have to go with your most overstable disc. Truth. You want to find the right speed for that wind speed mm -hmm. because if you're throwing into that headwind and you're throwing, say, a Firebird, once it starts to do its thing in hyzer, and if it shows that plate at all, it's going to shoot left. Yep. So, and the same thing, if you throw something under stable, it's obviously going to way over there. You want to be in the middle. You want to be in your fairway. So you kind of have to find the right stability. And sometimes that's something right in the middle. Yep. And so a lot of beginners want to just go out and just go more overstable in a headwind no matter what. But there's a point where, where you really have to find that medium so you can get as much of your distance as possible and not be over there. Uh, OB over there or OB over there. True. And another thing is, uh, I personally, I try to use something that's a little bit, like I try to stay away from mid ranges in headwinds just because they're blunt and a fairway can fight through just a little bit better. So if you can get really comfortable with fairways and your angles and fight the wind with those, I think it's gonna be really nice. So the, the, the way I think of it, and I don't know if you'll agree with this, but um, I actually, think that crosswinds to me are more important than head and tail mm -hmm. so when i'm walking up if there's a, a heavy right to left but it's kind of a tailwind as well so it's a right to left tail i in my head put the priority on the crosswind um same thing opposite way you know it says, it says headwind but it's a heavy left to right or it says a headwind but it's a heavy right to left then i actually think that that crosswind is more important in priority yep. because even though it's a headwind, if it's a right to left and I throw a backhand, uh, it's going to push it that way much more than the disc will usually flip. Yes. To add to that, one other concept of that is your um, side angle, I guess you might call it your hyzer and hyzer, yep. is much more important and touchy on crosswinds. Truth. So if if even if I'm throwing a stable disc, but I it's a, say it's a left to right crosswind, and I've got it on a little bit of Anheuser, then it may come out, but it may not have a chance because it may get under there, and just so yep. these things kind of work together. A lot of winds, you got all kinds of calculations going on. Definitely. But just to know on your on your side, your crosswinds, the wing angle is really important. Same thing if say it's an understable disc, uh, but you've got a right to left. And you put it on hyzer, mm -hmm. then it may never come out of that. True. So, true. yeah, your stability can only do so much. You really have to have, like you said, your nose angle and your hyzer and anhyzer really good. Uh, the crosswind can take your discs very fast, so those are very important. So, as a beginner, I think my best advice would be, or my my best advice to beginners would be, do your best to keep it flat. Keep yes. it really flat, no matter where those angles are so that you can keep it low and flat and then as you play more you'll get to understand as you you know how you can manipulate your discs yep yep and so yeah yeah definitely I, so headwind tailwind and then figure out the cross if there is any cross cross is definitely priority because that will take your disc much more than just the head and tail yep it's a great great point yeah kind of a, a little recap of what we're talking about headwind for throwing backhand it's going to turn your disc. So if you're throwing in a headwind, it's going to want to flip your disc and make it ante, right? That's the idea in a headwind. So you wanna try and get your stability and your angle to where you can minimize that turnover, right? And for a tailwind, 
is exactly opposite. It's going to slow your disc down and for a backhand, it's going to hyzer out much faster, right? So in that case, you just want to use something a little less stable. You can kind of hold that angle a little more without just dumping and hyzering out. Um, those two ideas, as long as you kind of understand them, you can really start to manipulate, manipulate how you throw on the course and in the wind. And then another tip uh, for any wind play is to try and keep your disc underneath the wind as much as possible. You know, you're not throwing sky high and the wind is just going to take it. Um, you know, understand your wind, know what you're going to do and try and just penetrate through it as low as you can. You know, if you throw it into the ground, it's not the end of the end of the world. You know, you didn't go OB, you didn't just shank a shot. Just try and get under the wind, let the disc push and fight and, and see what happens. Once you get more experience, you'll start to understand it. All right, so um, I just want to mention that this guy, uh, Nick Anderson, just took down big tournament in some of the craziest wind I've ever played in. And a um, blizzard. Yeah, and a blizzard <laughs> uh, in April in Western Colorado. So he took down the tournament in a playoff against the Aaron Gossage, yeah. which was incredible. And I'm not kidding. It must have been 20 mile an hour wind all day long. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, don't look it up. Don't look up my name on there. You don't want to know how I scored in the division I'm in. But um, this guy took it down with, uh, was it 15 under? Uh, 15 two, under. Two and, rounds yeah. of 24 holes each round, but 15 under in some crazy wind. I think mm -hmm. third place behind you and Aaron was 10 under just to, yeah, in MPO. And these are great that. players. So um, 15 down, and then he won the playoff, which was incredible. Yeah. And um, so just so you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. And... He knows how to keep it also keep his head in it when it's windy True. and so um maybe if you wanted to make any anything that you haven't said about um you know mental game on on keeping on top of that wind the whole time yeah because yeah. personally yeah you get i know how daunting. hard that was overwhelming I, for sure. I got my high score on a single hole so yeah. um, <laughs> a 10. so shoot yeah um but um it's taxing on you you know when you're done it with is. those rounds you're I feel so worn out just and almost just drained. Yeah, yep. because every single shot you have to calculate so much more. Um, so, do you have any yeah. anything to say on that? Um, real quick though, shout out to Aaron Gossage. Uh, we were teammates in college for collegiate golf, so taught me a lot. Um, other than that, I honestly just try to not overthink things, right? Like, I know what I need to do in the wind. I know what the wind is gonna do, drop it, push it. Um, but just keep mentally focused and calm. You know, it sounds easier said than done, but you know what to do and you've done it many times practicing. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, outwork your self doubt. So if you have any self doubt, just outwork it. Like, you know, exactly what you're going to do. Um, building confidence with reps is key. Um, so just keeping calm, you know what to do, um, uh, nose angle, all the things. Um, but just, just stay calm. You know what to do, you know? Awesome. Thank you. Um, so just want to say thanks, Nick. Um, this is great information and it's going to help me on the course <laughs> and, uh, hopefully it'll help a lot of you guys out too. So yeah. we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Nick. Awesome. Um, thanks to finish line, triple play, upper park and aces fly dice. You guys are awesome.